2020 GSL Super Tournament, Season 1. Welcome back, everybody. What a crazy Game 3 that was. It was an awesome game. What a, what a fantastic game. Such a good game. ending. You know, it goes to show you <laughs> how that first, I mean, literally the first tech building for Zerg. I know we don't normally think of it as tech, but it is. You need yeah. that. You need a spawning pool in order to uh, make lings. But in the end of the game, when gas is sparse, yeah, that's the most important building. He kills that off, and you can't make anything else. He couldn't I mean, make anything. People man. could take links for granted in super late game, right? I mean, but yeah, I mean, you're usually throwing them away in fights so that the other units do damage. But if you don't have that, guess what? The ultras get shot down, the hydras get shot down. They didn't even you have don't those have either. I mean, anything. Yeah. Crazy. Well, moving on, we have another PBT. Yes. It's going to be Deer going up against Cure. These now, are two of the most highly respected players that don't deliver all the time. Yeah, they're both very, very strong, but you're right. They tend to be uh, overshadowed. I think this should be a close match, match, though. To be fair, Deer has won a GSL. Uh, you know, he's he was a Royal Rotor, in fact. Uh, he also won a big WCS tournament. Uh, I mean, he's he's had some success, whereas Cure, but not as much. But Deer's also had some major flubs. There's been they, there's, yes, there's he's been moments where where major flubs. He is not looking like the guy that we knew before. Yeah. So we got to see where he's going to be at now, today. Um, I think this is probably supposed to go to Deer, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Deer is in ridiculously good shape. Uh, wins tons of online cups uh, full of top pro gamers. So we shall see about that. Uh, kind of excited about the map pool. I'm hoping that eventually we see Golden Wall, but not holding my breath. OK. Game one is ready. Both players have now joined our lobby. The map will be on Everdream. Do tell your friends to join us uh, and tune in to the quarantine edition of the Super Tournament while the world fights coronavirus by uh, each person isolating themselves and washing their hands and doing the right thing there. You might as well have some fun and watch some good old StarCraft 2 and make the best you can out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, game one is ready. This is Cure versus Deer. Game start. Kaizi Gaming, Deer. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Cure. Right. I'm just excited to see what these guys bring. Yeah, we definitely had a game archetype going on with Morrow versus Stats, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they basically both came in with plans, and one was clearly working out better than the other. I gotta say, Kier definitely does not play the same. Look at that offline match history. Deer just slaying Kier. Uh, but that's, that's not really the state of how good they are right now. Kier is absolutely one of the top four Terrans in the world at the moment. Sure. He's just really, really good. Uh, yeah, I mean. I think after game one from Deer, we're gonna have a better idea of where he's at. And I'm not, I'm not knocking on him, it's just, you guys have been watching GSL for a long time, you know, sometimes the games just do not look like the Royal Road or Deer that we used to know, you know? Yeah. He's really good when he's good, and then we had a couple seasons where he just like lost to the first unit that attacked him over and over, and it was really weird. But yeah, oh, we'll see. Now he does go core before Nexus, sends that scout out there. Reaper expand, of course, here or here. Checking around for proxies a little bit. I'm so glad to be back in the studio casting again, man. We had such a long downtime. I know. It's crazy, this, man. It just feels so good to have GSL specifically back. Yeah. I mean, I love the casting Starcraft ASL 2 GSL as well, tournaments. But, yeah. Like, GSL is something very special about it. You know, it's we, just so much fun. Well, this is really our baby. And also, you know, it's 
It was such a long downtime. It was the longest downtime you and I have had casting StarCraft II ever. Yeah. In the 10 years plus of the game being out. I mean, it's it's crazy, right? Mm. So it was weird. You know, I'm, I'm so used to coming down here and hanging out in the studio. Yeah, it's never again. Never again. <laughs> yeah, please no. I don't think it'll ever happen again, to be honest, like that. But, uh... No, it's just, it, there's something nice about it, having this super tournament, just having this regular... Ooh! Oh, wow. Dark Shrine hitting. Starport hitting at the top. Gateway hitting over here as well, probably to accelerate warping. This looks like a PvP right now. Yeah. All right. Deer Except coming with some expansions. plans. Oh, this is exciting. This is not something that you see. Uh, the Twilight is a very normal opener. Obviously, we see a lot of blink openers. Oh, oh my God, he's going to scout that yeah, as well. This is not finished yet. Oh, that's crazy. Say goodbye to your... Oh, oh that's funny that it attacked. <laughs> I didn't even realize what was going on at first. Yeah. That is really funny. And now, that's, because oh. he didn't finish the shade, the Dark Shrine gets scouted. Yeah. I want you guys to just... This is the butterfly effect of this bad is, gameplay here. This is the biggest butterfly effect I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like he wants to go in. Wait, is he going to go into a BC? That's yeah. wild. I thought maybe he was going to go lib range or something. But um, look, just if he had not finished the shade, if he had been a little bit quicker and canceled that shade, he would have killed the SCB and the Dark Shrine would not have been scouted. Instead, yeah. the Dark Shrine is scouted. As soon as the Dark Shrine is scouted, the DTs are worth like 1% of what they were going to be worth. Yeah. You know? There was like a chance for these to do damage. Now there's not. They can maybe pin him in his base a little bit, and that's it. Like, watch. There'll be a scan, and then the turret's done. That's it. Okay, so there. One dies immediately. The scan. The DT. No? Sorry, buddy. The turret's done. Wow. Because we didn't finish the shade. I know. God. Craziness. Okay, so a, game. a Banshee being made, but he has the Fusion Core, so I'm really excited to see what he wants to get out of this. Obviously, that the, the more, most recent patch, for anyone who did not know, uh, changed some upgrades into the Fusion Core, so it's a little bit easier to do things like upgrade Liberators. Uh, BC. But, yeah, it's going to be a BC, BC which wow. is... I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at, which excites me. That's, this is we exciting. Wanna, we want to follow the... Uh, I love BC the, the, versus Protoss games. I love them. Well, I, I want to see what the Protoss unit composition is, because I don't know if he's necessarily yeah. expecting this or not. Keep in mind, this was a scouted proxied star. No, I don't think you port. expect this. There yeah. was a very short meta of there being a lot of BCs against Protoss. A very short meta game of that after Nathanius invented it. That's right, after Nathanius <laughs> came in here. I mean, he showed the world. That's right. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's not a common thing at all. I think he was going for a lot of surprise factor with this. Yeah, there, there's a whole mind game going on where like you float the starport away and people might assume that it's not going to be used, but then you land it just away from where it was spotted and use it again. Well, I think um, he was planning on BC the whole time, I think. Okay. I think so because he was starting the fusion core, right? Mm, actually, you're, that's a very good point, Artos. So. And the thing is, the fusion core could mean multiple he's, he's things. He's going for a two-base push, basically. He wants the BC to soak damage. Whoop. <laughs> this he, is really he, funny. Did okay, that come so out over there? I All love right. It. Okay, so the BC going to go ahead and put some pressure on. Uh, these stalkers are going to have to get recalled, I think. Yeah, but here's the thing. The push is going to come up here in the front, and then there's nowhere to move these stalkers around. Yeah. And he just moves the BC back. Yeah, yeah the BC is very annoying, but it takes a long time to kill. He needs to pull these stalkers back. Dude, there's there's two shield batteries here. He needs to utilize them before they die. I know. He's gonna stop this army. And look at this, the BC comes back in. He's like, got it, it pincer. One Colossus uh, coming oh in God. over here. I think Deer is a bit confused right now. Well, I can't really blame him for that. This is crazy what we're seeing. Oh my God. And the Reaper wall getting getting punished once again. This is just a wild, wild game. I mean, there's so much infrastructure getting obliterated just yeah. on the... He has no cybernetic score anymore, by the way. Oh, oh his uh, disruptor right? died. I didn't notice that. Did that get destroyed as well? Yeah, the cybernetic score is gone. So he cannot even make stalkers. <laughs> oh, it's all wow. so sad. It's all so sad. 
Oh my god. Well, I don't I don't think there's any way to recover. Yeah, this, I mean, this is just this, this looks is, real bad. I have not seen this strategy ever. Yeah. Ever. Well we've had some Like maybe time this off. is something that exists, but I I, I don't know. Uh, it feels like Deer doesn't know either. That's what it feels like watching this, yeah. because I almost feel like I'm watching a broken computer. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it, it, Like, I'll, normally you hit positions where you kind of know what to do and you're being very active and stuff. Instead, like, all this stuff's just sitting there and he's, like, just randomly throwing, like, a disruption ball down the ramp and it's not working. Yeah. And, like... The Colossus came out seeming to not answer anything as Bunker's finished. Yeah. Uh, the... the uh, Stalkers went right back to try to fight the battle cruisers. Well, a battle cruiser, I should say. Well, uh, he just set up camp right at the entrance. Uh, one thing we are seeing very popular today is the usage of bunkers to just fortify positions. This actually oh, that's looked, super cool. This strategy was actually one of the oldest strategies ever in StarCraft. It was used in StarCraft One. Is you just yeah. spawn bunkers outside their base yeah. and set up tanks and just slow push from there. And map makers fix it so that would never be used again. Um, look at that. He jumps the BC down to the SCVs to repair. I, I love it. it. Beautiful. Instead you know, we saw BCs home. used a lot against Zerg last year because you could just keep doing damage and then jump it back home and repair it and then send it out again. Yeah, you it's could still, do that here. It's still, you still yeah. see it too. Yeah, but it, the same idea is here. You just jump it to the SCVs, repair sure. it. It's like, how much? How many probes and stalkers and sentries did this yeah. kill? And you don't Enough. actually want stalkers against this comp as much, right? Yeah. It's like bunkers and siege tanks. That doesn't right. feel like it's a very valuable unit. So there's going to be a counterattack here. I'm not clear on what this is going to do, though. No, he doesn't have enough to kill him. Like, I mean, you have to do something. You can't just right. sit in your main base. <laughs> so kudos to him for being out here and trying it. It's 25 workers to 69. GG. I mean, here takes it. Easy wow. peasy. Wow, that was just a very super cool strategy. By the way, uh, Deer was always dominating Cure in other matches, so to see this happen now is a big change. Mm -hmm. But that game was quite extraordinary. It was very different. A scouted starport that accidentally had an adept shade out of position, forcing the SCV to flee in a specific direction away from the adept if it were to come back in there, forcing yeah. the starport to remove, forcing unintentionally the SCV to find the proxy DTs, which allowed yeah. the Terran to then shut that down, which then allowed the spotted proxy build that we saw at the start of the game work out. Yes. Yes, that is, it is a wild butterfly effect scenario, it's, but yeah. it's exactly what it is. I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. All right. Purity and industry, our can next map. Can they live together? Well, these two sure can. One of these players is going home. Our game is now loading up in one of the weirdest games we've seen here that resulted in one of the most unique wins I've gotten to cast in a long time. Let's see what happens in game two of Deer versus Cure in the GSL Super Tournament. Game start. Kaizi Gaming, Deer. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Cure. Of course, no longer with Jyn Air. Excited to see what he can do outside of the shadow of Maru. I still kind of think of him as a Jyn Air player, though, you know? Well, he was on that team for so long. Yeah. So, uh... We've had some crazy games already on this map. I don't know how it's going to look with these two players. Yeah, that SOS they, they, game was so cool. Yeah, the, the, the shape of this map is, is pretty unique because they both start out yeah. um, you know, in, in the corner, uh, somewhat close by air. Yeah, somewhat close by air. But, but there uh, is interference there. Yeah, and um, the map itself is really, truly large. Uh, right. So macro games probably much more likely. It's going to be very hard, especially for Terran, to walk across the map and kill their opponent. Because by the time you get there, they will just have like an additional two rounds, right? Yes. So, whereas uh, theoretically, you'd have a better chance of killing as Protoss because of the warping mechanic, right? But um, yeah, one would think. Yeah, but still, it's 
it seems like a very uh, likely to see longer games here, basically. Game I want to see BC again, man, so badly. Oh, so yeah. So badly. I mean, I think my favorite game that we've had on this map, I know it hasn't been you know, very many casts, but, man, the SOS game with the, with the um, oh, yeah. two carriers yeah. just poking at the bottom. You know, because of the way the map's shaped, a lot of times you start out, um, for instance, in cross spawns, right? And that can lead to some very, some games we've definitely seen, obviously they're very interesting, but because you're both having to stretch and reach the bottom left, assuming that the game were to go on and on and on and on and on, mm -hmm. makes for some interesting plays. We've also seen the giant area that's right down here used occasionally to hide certain techs because it's just so out of the way. It is really out of the way. Uh, not just expansions there, but just other techs as well because mm -hmm. it's like so inconvenient to try to check for stuff there. Sure. By the way, the SUV popped up, saw a Chrono Boost gateway in the main base, and no Nexus, right? So he, he knew one uh, base tech, but this is actually, it's a very quick Oracle. And more. even though there are the uh, the Bubulas to slow down the Oracle, it still gets there very, 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 very fast. And right now, Kier doesn't have any anti-air. His anti-air is all in the middle of the map. It's those Marines that we just saw attacking the Adept. Yeah, the Adept that was nearly killed off, but managed to escape just in time. Now let's see what happens as this comes over here. Yeah, the, I'm I'm not feeling too good. Okay, well, he brings Marines back. back. That's so important. But it seems like this would be something you just have to be somewhat oh, look ready at that. for. He flies right over that. That's surprising to me. Well, it looks like it's less Bubula. Yeah. Than to get through. He's dodging Bubulas, but. Yeah. Oh thus... my god, why did he leave? Why did he leave? What? What? He must have not seen that. There's. How could that even be? Oh, he had the Widow Mine as well. What? He had a Widow Mine. Oh, okay. Well, there's already a shield battery here, a stalker, and a depth, an oracle. That's enough. Oh, nice couple of hellions. All right, six kills on the uh, the oracle. I want to see like. what the worker count is overall here when this is all done. Twenty-two to twenty-six, with deer in the lead. The medevacs now looping out, closer towards the center of the map. It's a funny back and forth with, you know, the uh, oracles and then medevacs with marines because over uh, areas where you can't land, neither can engage each other. Ooh. Fleet beacon. Here we go. Okay. I think I it's going to be map. Tempest. Yeah. Well, when we first had our uh, game with us. Oh! 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 oh, man. Deer. I mean, he should just hold this, right? Well, he can little target bit, down the Oracle. Sloppy. He does have a shield battery over there. Okay. Doesn't lose the stalkers. I feel like we're seeing a game with two players who are very good but are not used to this map yet. He, that this is, is this a fair been, assessment. There's been a lot of bumps <laughs> it's a very new uh, map. on both sides. <laughs> yeah, that could be. That could be. Obviously, it takes a while to get used to a map uh, as different as this one. Now, uh, with the Tempest coming in here, a couple things we want to point out. If Terran spawns in the upper left, the uh, add-ons point towards the right. Oh, that's true, yeah. So, you know, even the placement of this factory, for instance, is pretty significant. Hmm. Whereas, oh, now hold on. Is he going to push from somewhere else? I'm imagining that the Tempests are going to be in the Bubula area. Yes, 100%. Uh, chucking that's... damage down there while Protoss tries to push on the ground. Yeah. And, and you basically split Terran up where they can't really fight and defend in two locations. And something has to give, right? Well, he's actually uh, upgrading Cyclone Lock on. Uh, so that's a, actually quite a good counter to these Tempests. So I think that Kier is going to be all right against this, but I still like what Deer's doing. This is exciting. Making quite a few gateway units right now, maybe to put some pressure on at the same time. Oh, he actually has the Tempest with the army. Now, I didn't expect this. No, I, I didn't I, either. I, hmm. This is cool, though. I like it. The, you can really defend the Tempest a lot extra right there. Very interesting strategy. Is the ground army strong enough to really complement the Tempest here? Uh, well, he added a few gates, so after he gets a couple rounds, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to do all right. Because right now it's two Stalkers and a Sentry. Yeah, it's going to be, but he has like four gates now, I want to say. So you add in like four more Stalkers this, right? Ooh. And the Tempest don't do nothing. See? They do something. Aha. Well, uh, 
The third is done, but there's no SCVs there. Yeah, he really... Is, oh, sorry. No, no, you're fine. It's, I was just going to say, this is like a, basically a push from the Protoss. Yeah. No, which this you is... don't normally see in this match. The Protoss is not normally pushing the Terran, but I guess here we are. This is pretty similar to Classic's cheese that we saw last year. A Tempest three shot a, a Cyclone, right? Uh, it's three or four, I believe. I'm, I'm actually just not sure we don't get to see these kind recall. of engagements that often. But uh, Kira right now, he's waiting to make sure he has enough to lock on and really, really punish here. Uh, I believe he has four Cyclones right now, and he's done the upgrade. I really like how he's just waiting far back. He's like, yeah, I'm going to lose a little bit, but we have to have this engagement perfect. And three is a great number here. Already he's just one-shotting the uh, SCVs. Now, there's going to be a moment where Terran is going to pull the trigger and dive, and that's when these Tempests need to be over the uh, shield batteries immediately. And does he do it? Yeah, it's one of them. All right, the army actually coming up now. Is this army? Oh, he gets another one. Very well done. Is this army good enough to do anything? No, it I doesn't like seem like just... it. It doesn't seem like it. I think he dealt with this just perfectly. He has yeah. so many Cyclones in here, a fair amount of Marines as well. Okay, so the two Tempests already taken out. There's another one that's going to merge in here with the rest. Uh, is there a sentry with this army? I don't see there one. There was, and okay. it's dead. Because, you know, a force field that blocks that, you know, anything on the ramp, oh, that would be yeah. huge. But even, even a guardian shield would have been gigantic here. He's taking out the shield batteries. There's not going to be much more sustain here on the map. God, I think that Cure's army is just good enough. This many cyclones even made the second factory. Oh, this is... What a, what a handsome defense from Kier. Look at that. Okay, another Tempest the punishing is, is gigantic. Yeah, he gotta it, go for he's got to do that. Yes, 100% finish it. What? What? What are we waiting for? Yeah, I don't know. He's like, I need two more Cyclones in there before I finish that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think that was, like, I'm, his I'm, best shot. I'm worried that even though these Tempests are doing a lot of damage to the ground, the, the overall, the... Uh, the the rest of the Protoss ground army is too flimsy, you know? Yeah. By the way, this is three base to two. I mean, eventually the, the economy play is going to start to benefit Cure mm -hmm. by a lot. Yeah. The, Dare is basically invested in this attack working. Oh, my God. Oh, the, the amount of Cyclones is getting so out of control. Okay, Look, I, th the, I think the strategy is actually just obsolete is the problem. Well, it's cool. Cure it's definitely a, snapped its neck. Yeah. And actually, I heard that uh, when this build actually came up last year, uh, a, a very similar build to this. And if I recall correctly, again, it was uh, Classic that did it. It was on uh, Cyber Force. And uh, I remember SOS said he knew exactly how to kill this. And obviously, SOS and Q were on the same team for a very long time. And it had to do with Cyclones and getting the right amount to lock on to kill the Tempest. Yeah. And uh, we see, I mean, he just Dude. really leaned on the, these Cyclones okay, to hold he's, this. He's going he's gonna to bring this all the way home. Well. SCV is stuck in the back, but you get the idea. He just wants to try to take this fight. He's decided he has an insurmountable lead. He's happy to have SCVs tank damage. And there's just so many Cyclones coming in here, and that should be, I think, GG. I mean, yeah, this is really so much damage, it. and again, there's really no way to recover. Look at that. Wow. Lock-on's just dealing ridiculous amounts of damage, and that is going to be that. Cure just uh, with a beautiful hold here. Yeah, Kier, Kier really exhibiting a, a deep understanding of just the game overall. You know, he's really showing he has the instinct, too. Yeah. She really team. clean, awesome play. 2-0 lead for Kier right now. These Terrans are so strong. Terrans tonight, 8-0 so far. 8-0. Yeah, that's right. How about that? Uh, you know, Deer showed that he's definitely got a really cool strategic take on that map, but it didn't work out at all. I mean... Yeah, it was a cool idea. I thought he was going to go through the Bubulas for I, sure because yeah, just the, it just felt like this is like I don't know. I, I like that is a strategy you could use on any map if you weren't going to utilize that airspace that was so close. You know. You know. It almost seemed like Deer thought that the Tempest were going to counter the Cyclones early on, but it was the opposite. Well, they. Do a little bit At early the start, on, yeah, but, but he, he just didn't engage. He just let him kill all his depots. He killed like four depots for free. Yeah. Kira was like, no, I'm not touching that till I'm ready. Yeah. And then eventually there was just enough, and suddenly uh, whatever Kira thought, I'm sorry, whatever Deer thought he had managed to pull off was the total opposite. Um, all right, we're going to go to Nightshade for game number three, and this might be another 3-0.
It's definitely possible. Cure's looking better tonight. Sometimes we have nights like this. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Game start. Kaizi Gaming, Deer. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Cure. Okay, so... You know, it seems like if we have a normal game from Deer... Well, I guess we haven't had that yet, now that I think about it. Game one was actually exceptionally weird. He went for a DT rush that was yeah. spotted. Yeah. That was the butterfly effect game. And then in game two, I mean, I, w I, I do welcome unique strategies like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It goes to show you that there's still st so much more we can learn about this game, but... Um, I mean, I don't know, man. Kira just seems like bigger, faster, stronger. I know I've used that expression before, but this is what we're seeing here now. You've never used that before. Thank you, Artosis. <laughs> now, <laughs> one thing to, to bear in mind is that historically, Deer always dominates Kira. Mm -hmm. Well, times do change. Yeah. And Cure, I mean, it's been a long time coming for him. In fact, we had a couple of false starts, if you recall. Right. Uh, where, where it was thought he was going to do real well, he started playing well, and then just gets eliminated. But if you, you know, I, I follow all the results online with the pile and tree tweak and everything, and Cure has won so many tournaments lately. He's in the finals of a Limo League all the time. He's just, he's playing the Kung Fu Cups. He's just, you know, and these are, these are tournaments that have other top Korean players in them. And he's really doing well. So I think it's time to translate that to this studio, you know? You know, and yeah, he's, This he's... might even help him that there's no crowd. Oh, God, that's a good point, actually. It's you know, possible. it's it's, uh, it's somewhere in between a real studio match and an online match, you know? It is a thing that some players struggle with. You can talk to some pros, and they say they actually want a big crowd. Yeah. They enjoy that experience. Do you thrive and, off the energy, or does yeah. it add pressure to you that you don't know how to deal with correctly? Yeah, that's and other, other people question. find themselves to be just very uncomfortable and, and antsy and anxious. Mm -hmm. um, and it does seem like Kyrie is the latter. He, he's somebody who obviously knows how to win. He grinds a lot. He doesn't give up easily. You know, he's, he's always been somebody who I think has not been quite satisfied with his performance and has wanted to do more and believes that inside of himself he has the ability to do more. Mm -hmm. um, but today we're really seeing him look strong. Oh, man. Well. All right. It's a good scout. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want Cure to do well. I really enjoy his style. I enjoy watching him play. Okay. So this is... Uh, Probably. As late as you can possibly deny a barracks, so we're going to see yeah. what Cure's plan B is here. So that's one of three Raxes. Mules should be able to build buildings, by the way. Uh, that's one <laughs> of three barracks, and obviously he wanted that to be hit, and he's starting another one at home, so he's just he's trying to do like a very bio-heavy opener. This is a very old opener. Proxying it isn't a normal thing, but uh, just going three racks pressure, um, it's like... It's, I actually thought we were going to see a resurgence of it because of the speed of the stim upgrade. Yeah. I thought that we might see that as a way to bust down uh, Protoss third bases really easily. But, yeah, we haven't we haven't actually seen any resurgence of it. This is the first time I've seen it since that patch, since the, the stim, uh, the quicker stim patch. And now that he's scouted... Like if you if you just built that racks in your main, there's he just doesn't know that you're going three racks, and he'll probably yeah. take a third quicker. If he sees that there, he's alerted that something weird is going on. So, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, Good. <laughs> Good. I was Die, stalker. <laughs> Dear, I don't want you to win any maps tonight. <laughs> when I was actually trying to think, it was like, I was going to say good, like, tactic to just wait right on the high ground, but uh, it didn't come out as fast. I thought you were just a, a I'm huge like, good. fan. <laughs> I hate stalkers. <laughs> Blink's almost done. <laughs> and, dude, I don't know if we're going to have a uh, Protoss win today. I don't think we're going to see a Terran lose, Artosis. It's possible. It, it may be. Luckily, we have a couple Zergs playing next, so. Mm-hmm. That'll fix things up for us. Yeah, that'll <laughs> that'll have to tie us over. I can't believe we've had that'll leave two dark or three O's already. I thought that the, the two games. I mean, granted, I loved uh, the second series that we had here today, but man, domination by the Terrans. Yeah, they're killing it. They're playing very well. 
So charge lots is the tech of choice here as Protoss takes the third. And interesting, no forge. Ah, there it is. Two forges, yeah. Yeah. Just wondering a little bit about that. Normally you're gonna want to get that plus one armor upgrade very quickly. But uh double forge, good way to do it. Yeah. There is gonna be a very large bio push coming out. Uh, a larger one than people are actually used to right now, because again, this strategy has not been popular for quite some time. He's going up to wow. six gates. Good spot there with the probe. Truly. He's going to try again. He backed off to make it look like he was returning, looped back around, coming here from the top. I don't see anything on the minimap that's going to spot that now. Uh, we are watching Terran really build up to a push that's going to be pretty strong. We'll see if Protoss can deal. But some of that's going to be dependent on how he responds to the drop that's about to come here and hit the natural. And Protoss is really investing in gateways. Going yeah. for a beefy tier one army. He needs to. But I, I actually kind of wonder what this is going to look like when these two butt heads. Okay, well, if he actually gets good... How dare you call them butt heads, Zartosis? <laughs> Oh, my God. Perfectly handled there by Deer. Yeah, that was really beautiful. So he's going to come through here. Meanwhile, a third CC is being landed. And not landed, he's being built, actually. Right over um, at the at the third base. So I don't know if we're going to see Protoss try to come out and punish that. So far, all the drops have been shut down pretty easily. Mm, he Since, saved the Metavax, though, which is really good. That's true. But right now, I think this is a little bit better for Deer. Basically, everything's gone Deer's way so far. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Uh, I I just I wonder what this push is going to look like. Like, I thought for sure Cure was going to try to hit some sort of uh, plus one attack timing. But... Like he went, he went just the three racks into third base, and then added his additional racks on, which is a very kind of normal way to do it. So this has given Deer enough time to get a big enough army that I don't think that you can just go attack. Like you can, you can push out and whatnot, but I don't feel like this is like an attack timing that just wins the game. You know? Yeah. And when it, if it doesn't just win the game, then Deer is well on his way to Colossus Tech in 2-2 and will be feeling very good about his chances to win if he lives through this. Is there anywhere specifically you want to attack here, I wonder, is Cure? Because there's definitely some spots that Protoss is really, really uh, just prepared for the attack. Well, he, he has either two mines or four mines. Uh, I think it's two mines right now, but maybe a couple more are coming up. I think you can push the ramp with mines if you want, or go in, yeah, there's the four. This is the situation where you can kind of like poke and then try to get the Zalts to charge towards you and use the mines. There is a Warp Prism actually out kind of in the middle of nowhere right now. I thought he might be trying to use that to counterattack on the third. He's edging in again. Staying away, um, if he gets too close, the force fields can chop him, mm. uh, chop off a, a chunk but of the army. Look at this beautiful control from Kira. He's yeah. laying down these mines. He's continually repositioning here. He's trying to force a deer into a bad engagement. Yeah. Oh, this is very oh, good by Deer. Very good by Deer. But the cure with the unburrow on the mines, beautifully done. Yeah. An excellent really job big there. moment. Minimal amount of zealots coming in here, but that's enough that can take out all those uh, uh, SCVs that are mining yeah. over here. And this really pulls away from the momentum of Cure. Cure cannot reinforce this anywhere near as much. <gasps> the disruptor shot is amazing, and somehow it doesn't connect with anything. But you get it. The idea was yeah. there. No, the idea you was saw there. it too. Oh, there we go. A good disruptor shot right there. I'm a little bit worried about Kira continuing to try to push through here. Meanwhile, another drop over here in the main. Oh, God. The forest fields are real right there. Deer is playing beautifully here. Oh. Yeah, well, he's just being more beautiful. patient right now awesome. than Kira is. I think Kira is really trying to force something yeah, to happen that's just never going to work. And GG, finally. All right. Finally, someone fighting back against this overpowered these, race. These scumbag OP Terrans. God. Uh, okay, that was that was really good by Deer. Um, Kira's build, though, was off, let's not forget, right? He was trying to go for a three rex play with a proxy. One got scouted. That kind of slowed everything he was doing. He tried to go into a normal game, and I think he was controlling his army well. He had some very good ideas. And then Deer's small counter harassment, the three results to the third, and then the prism into the main. Those, the combination of those two things forced Cure to just dive. 
Like, yeah. he wanted to take his time on that push and, like, micro it out and grind down the Zealot count, and he was unable to do so. Really patient play by Deer, too. Just using the bare minimum to hold off the attack and letting his drop do all the work for him. Eternal Empire. Okay. Game number four. Let's see if Deer can start to continue what his work that he did in game three. Deer historically always, literally always beats Cure. So let's see if uh, it can be turned around this time. Let's go. Game start. Kaizy Gaming, Deer. Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Cure. It was a fun game. So we've had a lot of shenanigans in these games. People hiding buildings, them getting scouted. Um, a lot of a lot of this is players trying to mix it up and really not play a normal style. In the last game, Cure did hide a barracks. It was spotted at the last possible second to both kill the SCV, making it and deny the barracks from finishing. Mm. So we got to see Kier come up with a contingency plan. The idea was uh, good, but Deer's response and play was better. I wonder what we're going to have this time around. Are we going to continue to see a pattern of these two players trying to play around a normal game? Hmm. You know, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I hope that Deer pulls it back and plays some more standard play. OK. Is it, uh, yeah, the first two games where he tried to be cheeky really did not work out. Like, yeah. super duper did not work out. Well, especially the Tempest game was probably the most alarming, right? Because the Tempest game, it didn't... I, the thing is, games like that are so teched out. It's such right. just a build order slash strategy victory. Right. It's The reason why no build like that is common is because it can't work for long. Like... You and think it's too much of a gimmick? It's way too much of a gimmick, absolutely. Uh, it, the thing is, that's why it's also good to mix in, because it's so uncommon that people don't always know how to stop something like that. But Cure, it was very clear he knew exactly how to stop it, and I think that that has to do with teaming with SOS. He's making a bunker behind the minerals. Yep, he sure is. It's a cute little So move. now we know that this is going to continue to be kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, this will deny mining for a bit. It's really, I like it. Unless... Unless... No, he can't, he can't stop it. No way. Unless... No way, bro. Unless... No way, bro. No. <laughs> Second Reaper coming up. That's really cute. That's just... It's very annoying. Look at this. <laughs> he can keep hitting the Adept. Yeah, yeah. Can out-micro that Adept for sure. You're going to force Stalkers to come out. Like, he will be able to deal with it. You shouldn't end up losing anything, but... Again, yeah, but I mean... So annoying. You would want to have workers down here by now, so this is Absolutely. really annoying. I mean, this allows Cure to really uh, take full control of the early game here. There's a Void Ray being made. Are you wow. kidding me? Wow. Are you kidding me? A Void Ray? I'm really surprised by that. He has a shield battery being made. I'm really, really surprised by the Void Ray. It feels like he is over-countering this. Yeah. I, I think that what, what you do is you make a second Stalker and you use your shield battery and you poke and you do that little game where the SCV keeps popping in and out of the bunker and you try to kill it. Yeah. Because once the SCV is dead, the bunker dies. <laughs> well, he's also, it may be possible that Deer is going to end up squandering whatever benefits he had from a Stargate tech, you know? Like, to get the Void Ray, like, I don't... Well, once the Void Ray is out, like, yeah. are you going to get him with an Oracle after that? And the thing is... Oh, my God, okay. he's getting probes. Ah! Wait, did he get a probe? Yeah, he got he... at least one. Okay. Wow. Well, good oh, on him. he's not done yet. Uh, now, to be fair, like the Void Ray is a bad unit. It is the worst <laughs> unit in the game. Okay, but oh, it me. actually does some things. Like you can sit a Void Ray in a drop path or something like that. A Void Ray kills a Medivac when you hit the Charge Up button before right. the Medivac gets past it. It actually kills the Medivac ridiculously fast. So it's a, it's a reasonable anti-drop unit. 
the cast is half full here with Artosis. It's true. It's I true. don't know, man. I feel like already he slowed down the mining cure did. Oh yeah, yeah. He's 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 gotten the game to where it needs to be. There's no Oracle that's come out yet. Uh, Phoenixes are being made, albeit quite late, with Cyclones here to answer as we see. And just in that last shot, he's, we had. He's going to go Phoenix Colossus. Oh, wow. He just added two gases after making his Robo, and he's making Phoenixes. Yeah, he's going to go Phoenix Colossus. Why not? You have the Void Ray. You may as well. So a little bit less conventional of an approach here to the matchup. Very old here. school style. Yeah. But this may throw Cure off. Oh, I, this is cool. I, I like though. it. I worry for deer, though. I mean, I think there's enough Marines out, right? The Colossus can be strong against that. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's an antiquated style, but it's do, like... Do you think Kira would be anticipating this? Because there's definitely games where you attack across the map and you're totally caught off guard by the unit composition. I think he'll figure it out before it can hurt him. Okay. Uh, like, you see Phoenixes are being made. The Phoenixes aren't harassing you right now. He's checking for a third. You see that move out that he's doing right now? He thinks that there's a third, which is something that you'll do with Phoenixes sometimes. Uh, and when he sees that there isn't one, he'll become a little bit more suspicious and figure out the unit comp that's coming for him. But uh, it's it's such an old strategy that really does not get used that I just wonder how he'll counter it. Like, I remember the prevailing way was just to make a lot of Vikings, but then you had people like uh, Maru who would just do Widowmine drops until his opponent left the game. Right. Um, <laughs> which doesn't seem to make sense, but it worked for him. And Well, he started to push through here. He's going to get the Cybernetics core, which is a big hiccup in all tech. He gets another gateway. Easy peasy. There's not a real way to contest this. The Terran army is right now the stronger one, although a Colossus is about to come out. Yeah, the Colossus should help him to just hold okay. this straight he up. Okay, bursts through here with the Phoenixes, yeah. picking up the two Colossi, or I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, Cyclones, excuse me. Ooh, careful with that. So that Colossus comes out of the nick yeah. of time, but... He should not be attacking anymore. He needs to walk back. We uh, did see some tech loss there. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Terran can really pick up and drop, without, not with the Phoenixes in the game, not you without shouldn't. it being a high risk. But as I'm saying that, I'm seeing this army loop back up here. Yeah, he wants to try to cancel this base. Maybe he gets it. I think that uh, Protoss is out of position here. Yeah. Yeah, one thing about the Colossus is it's not a fast unit. Yeah. Nor well, is the Void Ray or Zealots on the ground, so you kind of Terran can get in and out pretty easily. Oh, okay, this is great targeting. He's, like, sacrificing uh, a lot of Marines to target down Phoenixes. Yeah, it's keeping that Phoenix town much lower. Remember, Marines are like the Zerglings of Terran. You know, you can make remake them. If you're trading off some more technical units like Phoenixes, I think that's worthwhile. And I don't actually think that Protoss could full-on counterattack from here. No. This means the third base for the Terran gets up before the third base for the Protoss. And map control, excuse, excuse me, control right now is still going to cure. Yeah, I think that Deer didn't deal with that that well when he pushed the first push away, he should have backed up into a central location so he could take his third. Having the third get canceled uh, and then also losing like four phoenixes. Maybe it was three phoenixes, maybe it was four phoenixes that went down. But that's like, that's too much. You don't actually want to make phoenixes all game unless you're Myungshik, right? Like you you want to get a certain amount so that they have to make a silly amount of Vikings to counter. Yeah, you're controlling uh, their response tech. Yeah, and then you want to try to get into something else. But yeah, to lose those, it's like each one is 100 gas a pop. Whereas you're killing some Marines, sure. Like he was chasing hard. He wanted the medevac, I felt like, and then he started lifting Marines, and the Marines turned and fired on the Phoenixes. The thing is you're going Colossus, so the Marines are the least of your worries, to be honest. That is not the unit that you need to reduce the number of. Right. Uh, whereas getting the number of your Phoenixes reduced is definitely a negative for Protoss. So I do not think that Deer traded well there at all. But he still has a decent amount. I saw five back there. There's the Void Ray Artosis ready to take out a Medivac. Yeah. Medivac flies over him. You'll see it die. Uh, the Phoenixes are not over here, though, right now. What am I looking at? <laughs> Get those Phoenixes with the Gloss Eye. All right, there we go. Yeah, I don't think Terran should uh, attack no, in here yet. He can't attack Well, the Colossi here. shots are going to get so much value before you are, you're ever even able to really get the shots off that you need to get. Mm. But Cure Supply is skyrocketing right now. You always get a bit of a supply lead in this matchup with the Terran. He's trying to trade his shots more efficiently. By the way, that, that Void Ray tanked pretty nicely. Yeah, it did. Uh, there's a lot of Vikings here. Okay, uh, the Marauders are they're not 
high in number here, but now there's just like nothing to stop these Vikings from killing everything. Yeah. And then this means the follow-up ground army is going to be way stronger here. What, it's six Vikings right now against the two Colossi. Yeah. They're each going to go down, and then the Protoss is going to have nothing really to defend against Marine Marauder Medivac. GG, Cure takes his 3-1. All right, uh, good win by Kira. I think that Deer misplayed with that composition heavily. I already kind I of agree. described that. So. I don't think he should have gone there, to be honest. I think that that little bunker being made over in the natural spooked Deer so heavily that he got himself into a position that's not going to be very winnable against a calm and composed Cure. Yeah, the Void Ray seemed like overkill. I think just Stalker production would have been fine. I think that the call after the Void Ray to go into Phoenix Colossus. Uh, I think that was totally okay. And then he he positionally was not playing it that well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We didn't really see. I, I think he, like it's an okay call to make, but you need to you need to be experienced with how to play it. We're going to a break. When we come back, our final match, Armani versus Solar. Don't go away.